Hi, welcome back. Today's episode is about pie chart. How to create a beautiful visualization in R using ggplot2. Today we're going to learn how to use geomcode, how to create bar plots using ggplot2 in R. Also, we're going to add extra information to convert this bar plot into a beautiful pie chart. Let's see what is this in R now. In the last episode, we were using that library ggp2, and also we were using the library dplyr for data manipulation. And then we were talking about our data set. In this case, I'm going to, I will continue using my Titanic. My Titanic is some data, is a data set that, as you can see, has some important information about multiple variables. Here we can see we have passenger ID, the information we don't need to use, survive if the passenger survived to the catastrophe or not. The P class is the passenger class. It was in the third class, second class, or first class. The name of each passenger, male or female, the, the sex of the passenger, age, siblings or spouse aboard, on board, parents or children aboard also, he had family or not, the ticket number, the fare they, they paid, and so on. So you can see we have multiple type of variables. Categorical variables, this one too. Categorical variable, age is numerical variable. Numerical variable, numerical variable. Okay, so we have to focus in one or two variables. For example, we can convert, as we saw before, my Titanic peak class. What it does mean? It means that we're going to access to this variable. Remember with the dollar symbol, we access to this information. Entonces, also, we're going to say, is that as character? Because, remember, as you saw, P class is numeric. So that means that we have to convert this information to a string. And how does we convert this to a string? Okay, we convert it using this character. So you can see, now it's not going to be a number, it's going to be a string. And then we can apply the function factor. Factor will convert will modify this variable to a categorical variable. We save it again in the same variable. It's important. This is so this is very important. Okay? Now we can check what it's about what we have about P class. And we can say the levels. One, two or three, right? But this, this is important because once we create our pie chart, we will need some adjustments about the category for each passenger. And then we will have this. Let's see. Remember the function count. Count is a function that is going to count due to some variable we are going to tell. In this case, p class. Okay. We don't need to group by p each p class. Okay. We have one, two, or three class, right? Remember? Three classes. We don't need to select or to use group by once we're using count. As we can see, I'm going to run all this part. We are saying, my, from my Titanic, use the function count in the function p class. That means it's going to start counting how many times does number one appears, how many times does number two appears, and so on. And as we can see the result here, ah, we have different p classes and different frequencies. So you can see here, the third class had more information or more passengers than the other classes. Then well, I'm going to use the function mutate. To do what? Okay, to calculate the percentage because it's better for us to read it like that. Instead of saying 491 versus 184, I can say, okay, the third class had this percentage of passengers, for example. So that's what we're going to use mutate. Mutate will create a new a new variable called percentage. We're saying n, as you can see it here, three values, sum of n, sum of n. Okay, sum of n will sum up all this information here. That means that 191 observations, if we if there's no missing values, of course, 891 observations. So that means that for each of these values, 216, 184, will be the, all of them will be divided by 191 multiplied by 100 to convert it to percentage. We can see this, and also also. Uh, we can create another variable at the same time in mutate, remember? Mutate is not only for creating one, but two or three or four. 
as you can see uh, but first I'm gonna show you this a bit better if you're going to sit like this see I'm just gonna show you okay be class okay what do I have okay I have one of more that's simple simple like that P class okay I didn't select what I had to okay I didn't select what I had to so I'm gonna rerun this and there you go as you can see I have 55 percent in third class uh, around 21 percent of the passengers were in second class and so on now I raise the, the parenthesis because in the same at the same time I want to create another variable called position pi that means the position for all these values which values okay percentage of course because I want to mark it uh, once we we draw our pie chart I want to see all these values 24 20 and 55 in the pie chart okay I want that I want to label my information and then say okay this same variable percentage I'm gonna calculate something what I'm going to do is, okay Compson what is Compson Compson is a cumul cumulative sum that means I'm gonna use 24 plus 20 at the beginning as you can see we have 24 and then at the second value in the, a new, the new column is going to be 24 plus 20 around 45 okay however because this is going to be a position position as you can see I'm saying okay we're going to calculate this percentage but we're going to subtract the half well, how do I know there is a half because 0 0.5 is like saying the value divided by 2 right so that the same value 24 I subtract the half is 12 ah so it's gonna be in the center see, this one is to to find the center remember to find center and then next I'm gonna run this part in that way you're gonna see it better as you can see it's here how do we how did I find 34 well it was 24 the cumulative sum the cumulative sum at the beginning was 24 I subtract the half of 24 is 12 the next one is 24 plus 20 is around 20 uh, 45 I subtract the percentage which percentage well 20 uh, 45 less or subtracted by the half of 20 that means less 10 right that means it's 34 so we will we, you will see why I drew it like that okay you can see that every time we're moving to the next line we find the cumulative sum and then we subtract the value in that line the half of that line actually you can see that's what it's doing it's doing that's position position in the pie and my data I'm gonna save it like this As you can see it I have it right now here that's what I have okay and we can see this information yes we can create a geom call geom call remember is a bar plot but the difference between geom call and geom bar is that geom call will receive the frequency meanwhile geom bar doesn't receive the frequency it will go to count line by line okay and we can see here geom plot gg plot and I say okay you're gonna Gonna to draw draw me this information. X in the, is gonna be the P class in the X axis and the Y axis percentage. So you can see here we have we have around 55% for the third class. For the second class we have around 21, and for the first class we have 24 percentage of the passengers were there in that Titanic. This graph is just show to show you how we got the, the information. Now this part here, what is going to help? okay because we have percentage and position pi we need to convert all this to a circle how why why because of course at the pie chart is a circle and then we have to convert all this percentage all this information to a circle and remember that every time we have certain percentage we have to convert it to degrees here we know that a circle has 360 degrees then we have if we are going to cover 55 percent of our information so we have to multiply 55 times 360 degrees that means that 50 
5% of the circle is it, it's equivalent to 198 degrees. Okay? That's what it does. And then, as you can see, the geom call here, we can change this information to polar coordinates. Ah, let's see what it does. Okay, as we can see, X is not going to have any information. Why? Because it's going to be a circle. There's not going to be X, X, X axis. Y is going to be the percentage. And theta, as you can see, is the one I'm saying. This is what you're going to have as, as degrees. And use fill, we're going to use it for the coloring, for coloring our information. There you go. That's what we have. That's a pie chart. However, we don't want only like this. We want to insert some information, of course. And that's why we calculate post pi. Okay? Now, remember what we calculate before. Position pi, label, for saying what is going to be the, the values, and the geom text in this case. As you can see, there is a problem with the position of my calculations. 55, 20%. 24. That means that is the problem with the order of this information. We're going to regrade the, the data. Here, we have count P plus as we had before. You see? You can see it. Arrange P class. So we are going to change this based in the P class. You see? Here. And we will have here. In descending order. Why? Because as you can see here, the majority of the information had to be in the blue color here. This is the third class. That's what we have. That's why now it's going to appear like this. Okay? That's why I'm going to rearrange my information. And I'm going to do the same as before. The new, the new information here is arrange. Arrange will change this information. Why? Because as you can see, the third class is the blue one here. So we have to change this position. And the same for calculating the, posi the position pi is going to be different now. This 55% has to be the first one to appear. And so on. Right? Let's, let's change this, and position pine will change too, as we will see. That's all. I, it's a minor change, but important. And let's see now the position. Ah, you can see. The position pine in the past was here, was 12. That's where 24 is. But now it's 27. But 27, that means that 55% will appear now in the, in, the, in the position, or the degrees, 27. Okay? And the same for the other ones. As you can see, they have changed. Because I, I saw that I had problems for the, with that. Now, I, I'm going to rerun everything. Saying that there's no X because it's a circle. However, percentage is going to be my label. My label. And P class is going to have the color for each class. Theta is going to be Y because it's there are the variable I want to use for mapping in my circle. And geom text just for the position. No position in X. Percentage uh, Y is going to be where it's going to try to find where to insert the 55, the 24, and 20.7%. Uh, okay. That's what I, I'm giving the coordinates. And let's run this. And here we go. So you can see I solved the problem. This position was not, this position were not in the right, in the right position. And now they are just using a range. So this is it. This is how you can create a beautiful pie chart in R using ggplot2 and its functions, count, geom call, arrange, and so on that you can use and you can find in the tidyverse world. Okay. Geom call was used, core polar, geom text, and ggplot. I hope you like it. Uh, this is what very interesting. In the next video, in the next episode, we will continue talking about different and beautiful visualizations in R using ggplot. Hope you like it. See you soon.